Welcome back. The last time we looked at how to customize your look and feel for the Talent LMS uh, platform. Today, we're going to add some users. There are two ways to add users to your platform. You can manually add them or you can import them from a spreadsheet or a CSV file. Obviously, you import users if you have a lot of users to import and you manually add a user if you only have a few users to add and you don't already have them in a spreadsheet. Today, we're going to focus on manually adding the user. And in the next video, we're going to look at importing users. So if importing users is what you're looking for, then skip ahead to the import uh, users video. But for right now, we're going to click add user. Let's say we're going to add Peter Parker to our organization. I'm going to type in his first and his last name like I'm doing right now. Uh, then we're going to add his email address. And notice how the username field just fills itself out when you add your email address. You can change it if you want, but usually you just want to leave it like that. Uh, password. You will need to set a password for the user when you create them manually. There are settings for forcing the user to change the password on the first login. There are also settings for enforcing a stronger password if your organization requires that. But for now, let's just type a password. The bio field. This field is, in my experience, usually not used that much. And remember that anytime you put information in a field, you have to update that field with new relevant information as things change. So I'm going to leave this one blank for now, and we can return to it at a later stage. I will talk about some uses for this field in later videos. Let's progress to user type. You got the learner type, which is essentially going to be your student, whoever is, uh, is using the platform to learn and not to instruct or to set up stuff in the admin interface. So most of your employees or most of your organization members. Then you have the trainer type. The trainer type is your instructor. This person will have different privileges. We will get into which privileges those are at a later stage. I'm going to do a separate video about all the different user types and how you can customize them. But for now, think of that as your instructor. Then you have your admin type. This type of user will set up stuff in the platform. They will change stuff that applies to all users. They'll be able to make trainers, uh, they'll be able to set up new users and user groups. And again, you can customize what they are allowed to do and what they, they aren't. The super admin, those are in charge of the entire platform. You should really not have a lot of super admins going around. I would generally limit it to two or three people. I would say one because with one person, you can have complete control over the platform. They don't have to wonder about what other people might have changed. However, sometimes people go on holiday, sometimes people are sick, things happen, and it's good to have at least two people with this role. But I would still say that one should be in charge and there should be good communication between any two super admins. So we're going to make this a learner type. Time zone. As the field suggests, it's the time zone of the user. It doesn't have any major consequences if you get this field wrong for most organizations. It has to do with the expiration dates of courses and uh, deadlines. So essentially the consequence if you get this wrong is that a course will expire an hour late or an hour early. Language. This is the language your users gonna view your platform in. All messages will be in this language and all menu items, everything the user sees will be in this language except, of course, courses that you only uh, supply in English, for example. I would set this to whatever is standard for your organization. Users can change this at a later stage. And by the way, they can also change their time zone and their bio uh, field we talked about earlier. Then we got the active field. The active just means if you tick this off, the user is instantly activated. And you also have a deactivate field. The deactivate field is useful if you have temporary workers, if you have someone in your platform that should not have access after a certain date. On the date that you specify here, the user will be deactivated and they will no longer have access to the platform. So be careful about using this field if you're not sure. But if you do know that a user is going to quit your company, if they're going to be a temporary worker only up to a certain date, or if you're selling a course and you only give access to a certain date, then take this off and put the correct date in. Otherwise, leave it alone. 
Exclude from emails. As the field suggests, this is if you don't want to send system-generated emails to the user. This is email such as uh, reminders for courses and anything that comes from the system that is not an essential message. If you take this, they're still going to receive uh, password emails if they want to reset their password because they've asked for it. But they will not receive non-essential messages that you might have set up like course reminders, uh, deadlines, etc. Things that the user has not requested. This setting is mainly as a legal requirement. There are certain countries where you have laws against sending out emails, unnecessary emails to, to users. And more and more with uh, privacy concerns, you're not allowed to send emails that users have not actually requested. So this is a setting, if you're worried about privacy or if you know about laws in your area that prohibit you from sending emails, take this one off. Then just click add user. And by the way, if, if you see this little drop down menu, there's an option to add another one right away. It just brings you back to a new empty field, but the user will still be added. Then it'll bring you into the courses. Before we move on to the courses tab, just be aware that now that we've clicked add user, the user's actually already added. So you don't have to add any courses. You don't have to add any groups, branches, or files. These tabs are not mandatory. So if this user now goes into their email, they will find an email saying that they've been created and that they've been given access to this platform because we ticked the active box. So with that in mind, we're still gonna go through these other tabs and see what they mean, starting with courses. The courses tab allows you to assign learning items to the user. Basically, you're checking off what courses should this user have access to and at what level. For example, now that I hit the plus, you'll see that he has access and his role is learner. That's just to say that he's a learner for the course, he's not an instructor. Accordingly, he's now going to receive an email. It'll say that he has been signed up for the course and now has access to it. Moving on to groups. Most likely, when you get into this area, you won't see any groups. We've added a group for the purpose of this video. There's going to be a separate video that goes through groups and branches so that you get an idea of how to set them up. But for now, we're just going to add this user to a group. Now he's a member of the group Retail Cashier. We're going to talk more about groups and branches in the groups and branches video and files. We're also not going to look at files today, but this is a way for you to upload files that this user should have access to. We'll talk more about that in a later video as well. In the next video, we're going to look at adding users through import. This is a much quicker way to bulk add users into the platform. And that's most likely how you're going to get your first users in when you're first implementing your platform. Later, you might set up an integration so that they automatically flow from one system to another. But to start with, most people use the import function. And that's also what I strongly recommend you do when you're still getting to know the system. And that concludes the manual user video. If you have any feedback, good or bad, uh, please put a comment down below. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Is there stuff I'm forgetting to cover? Just write it all in the comment field and, um, and I'll definitely give you an answer and hopefully try to cover it in a later video. If you like this video about manually adding users, then please like and subscribe. And we will return with a video about importing users from Excel or a CSV file.